Good morning, boys and girls. Mrs. Heideman here. Today we are going to look at lesson 15, part one. Today's learning objectives are that students will review sums of 10 and students will solve and practice triangular fact cards. Now, sums of 10 should be review for you guys from last year. Sums of 10, we're looking for combinations of 10. So if our whole is 10, then what two parts make up our whole? So I'm gonna start by putting some of these tiles in one of the circles and some in the other. We're still gonna to total that 10. So here I have one tile in the first, one tile in the second, two tiles in the second, three tiles, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So you can still see that we have one in the first circle and nine in the second, both totaling 10. So when I write that number sentence, one plus nine equals 10. Now, we can change the amount in the first, but it's still going to total 10. So instead of having just one in that first circle, let's move one over. So now we still have 10 total, but we have a different amount, two and eight. So two plus eight equals 10. Let's move another one over. Now we have three in the first circle and seven in the second circle. So one or three plus seven equals 10. And you'll start to notice a pattern. The more that goes in the first one, the less that are, that are going to be left in the second one. So three plus seven equals 10. What would that next one be? Okay, four and six. So you should be able to start seeing a pattern when that first circle, that first part is increasing, that second one is decreasing by one. One, two, three, four, nine, eight, seven, six, okay? So they, it's almost like a scale, all right? So one less, one more. So now we have our equal parts, five and five, okay? Five plus five, you know, equals 10. So we're gonna continue this. So just go ahead and watch, but I will talk to you what we're going to be doing with this. So if you know six and four equals 10, then when we do combinations of 100 in our live session today, you're going to know that 60 plus 40 equals 100. Or using the commutative property, 40 plus 60 equals 100, okay? So four plus six equals 10, six plus four equals 10. 40 plus 60 equals 100, 60 plus 40 equals 100. So here we are, the last couple combinations of 10, and you guys should know these very well. If I, um, when you guys are back in class, I'm gonna do a shout out, so it goes, if I say nine, you say, and then you say one, nine, one, nine, one. If I say seven, you say three, seven, three, seven, three. If I say two, you say eight, two, eight, two, eight, okay? So you shouldn't have to think to know those. All right, next we're going to look at a triangular fact card. As you can see, first we are using the numbers 13, eight, and five. So I know that eight plus five or five plus eight equals 13, okay? So I'm gonna write that first fact here. Eight plus five equals 13. Now, using the commutative property, I can switch the order of those add-ins around. So instead of eight plus five, I can say five plus eight. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that here. It equals the same amount, you're just switching the order of the add-ins. The total quantity stays the same. So five plus eight also equals 13. Next, we're gonna look at the subtraction problem. 
Now, with subtraction, you always want to start, in this case, with the largest amount. So 13 is your total or your whole. And if you're taking part of that away, it doesn't matter which part you start with first, we can start with five. If we're taking five away, you're going to be left with eight, okay? So 13 take away five equals eight. And then just the same, but switching the order of the number you're subtracting. So 13 minus one part, the whole minus one of the small parts, 13 minus eight, now equals five, okay? So you're looking at part, part, whole. Whole minus part equals part. Part plus part equals whole, right? So we'll be practicing this a little more um, together in our live session. Some of you are ready for the multiplication and division aspect of this, okay? So there, well, let's take a look at a couple more of these and then we'll go into that. So here we have seven, four, and we have a missing fact. You guys know that seven plus four equals what? Good, 11. So seven plus four equals 11, and you can switch the order of those add-ins around. Four plus seven equals 11. Still the same total. Part, part, whole. Part, part, whole. Now we start with that whole, and we are going to subtract one of the parts. It doesn't matter which one we start with. It could be 11 minus four. It could be 11 minus seven. It doesn't matter. So here we have 11 minus seven, that equals four. And then we're gonna subtract the other part, 11 minus four, that equals seven. Here we have the sum. They give us the sum, the total, and one of the parts. So 16 is our total, okay? That's always gonna be at the top of your triangular fact card. 16 is the total. And with subtraction, we always start with that largest amount, okay? So they give us one of those parts, nine, but we have to figure out what the other part that's missing is. So in order to do that, which one of these looks probably the easiest to solve? Well, 16 minus nine looks pretty easy. I know how to solve that. So I can take 16 and I can uh, subtract nine, or I can start with nine and count up to 16, whichever way you're comfortable with. That does total seven, so now we found our missing uh, number. So let's plug it in. Nine plus seven equals 16. Seven plus nine equals 16. And then that last one, 16 minus seven equals nine, okay? So you guys are kind of acting like detectives, finding that missing add end or missing sum, okay? All right, moving on. So here we have sums of 10. Now, this is what you're going to see in your triangular fact uh, practice for your lesson worksheet today. We'll go over some of these in the worksheet, but those should look very familiar to you. And then lastly, we have 12 and four. So I want you guys to think about where you can put those numbers, okay? So addition and subtraction are inverse operations. So are multiplication and division. You use multiplication to solve division. You use addition to solve subtraction. So we'll talk more about that in our live session today. So let's go ahead and plug in some of these numbers that we know where they're going to go, starting with that largest number, greatest number of 10. Then we can start plugging in the other numbers. Seven plus three is 10. Switching around the order of the add-ins, three plus seven equals 10. 10 minus one of the parts, doesn't matter which one, seven equals three. And then 10 minus three equals seven, okay? You shouldn't really have to be adding or subtracting once you know where to place the numbers. Now we have a missing number. We know the total is 12. We know one of the parts is four, but we don't know the other part. So let's plug in that first number that they give us, 12. So, so 
After plugging in 12, we know one of the atoms is four, so let's go ahead and plug that in. Four plus some number equals 12. Some number plus four equals 12. 12 minus four equals some number, and 12 minus some number equals four. So then you find the one that looks familiar, okay? We know 12 minus four is the one that we can most easily solve. So 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. So that missing add end will be eight, okay? All right, now you can plug in eight in all the missing spots. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. All right, lots of good practice with these triangular fact parts. Next, we're gonna look at some multiplication division fact families, so inverse operations. Just like addition and subtraction are inverse operations, you can use addition to solve subtraction, just like you can use multiplication to solve division. Okay, so we're gonna take a little look at some of these. Again, this is not in your uh, curriculum. It's not in your homework, but some of you are ready for this and have been working on multiplication and division facts. So, multiplication division. Let's say if two times three equals six, two groups of three, three plus three equals six, then you can switch the order of those uh, factors to equal the same product. So two times three equals six is the same as three times two equals six. Six divided into two equal groups gives you three in each group. So six divided by two equals three and six divided into three equal groups, three groups gives you two in each group. So just to start thinking about those uh, relationships between those different operations, okay? So the commutative property also works for multiplication as it does for addition, okay? Does it work for subtraction and division? That's something we'll have to be talking about uh, later in the year, something you can investigate on your own. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with looking at um, some division, and you guys will recognize this type of problem. So here we have 50 divided by 5, okay? So you can say 50 divided into 5 groups, or how many times does 5 go into 50? Well. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. So what times five equals 50? So we just figured out 10 groups of five equals 50, okay? So switching around those factors, trying to use multiplication to solve that division. So if 10 times five is 50, then 50 divided by five equals 10, okay? So you can start to see the relationship between multiplication and division, just like addition and subtraction, okay? So here we can switch around the order of the five and the 10. 50 divided by 10 equals five. We can do that same thing over here, five times 10, equals 50. So here we have another fact family, but using multiplication and division. We're gonna take a few more minutes just to practice additionally um, some fact family work, okay? So fact families are three numbers that work together, two addition and two subtraction, and that's what we're working on in class, okay? Even though we looked at multiplication division, this is the expectation for right now. So here we have the numbers two, four, and six. Six is the largest number, so it goes on top in our triangle. So we know that we can make two addition and two subtraction problems using those three numbers. 
Six is the largest of those three numbers, so we know six is going to go at the end of the addition problem, okay? It is the largest whole, largest part, right? So at the end of each addition problem goes six. Then we have two numbers here, smaller numbers, smaller parts, that you combine to equal that total. So two plus four equals six. Part plus part equals whole. Can we switch around the order of those add-ins, those parts, and still get that same whole? Yes, we sure can because we know the properties of the commutative property. So four plus two equals six. Four, five, six, okay? You shouldn't have to compute anything if you understand the way that these fact families work, right? Okay, now our largest number always goes first for a subtraction problem. So six will start with, so six minus one of the parts equals the other part, and the same thing for that last equation. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in six here, and we can subtract either part first. It doesn't matter, okay? Let's go with two. So four. six Perfect. minus two. So oh, six two. minus one part equals the other part. So four, okay? And then, back to right four, then six minus four equals two, okay? So you're just flipping around those two parts. Six minus four equals two, right? Which number have, hasn't gone in that uh, box for the subtraction problem yet, right? Okay, all right, so a little bit of practice with these fact families. We will be doing a lesson worksheet in class um, just so you can double check your answers. So that's it, boys and girls. I will see you in our live session today. Bye-bye.